Aegis. And that's the pick you think would round out the draft for G2, because they were lacking on magic damage. They find magic damage, it's actually through the Swain. So I like the Jace when it comes to blocking Sid. Oh boy, Perks does not have his World Ender ready to go anymore. Flash also not going to be available. Thing goes in, drops down the Cataclysm. Perks going to be stunned up there. The Jace comes in. Rookie's able to find himself some damage in first blood. Goes over to IG. Way down into the bottom lane, seeing if maybe there's a fight to be had, but Ning's also gonna be showing up here now, too. Could be a big three versus three. Balon going in. Ning's able to find the knockup on the yarn. It might be in some trouble here. Gonna be headbutt backwards. Able to find the cataclysm down on all three now. And Ning's gonna be dropped first. And G2 gets everybody out. It's one for zero. Really? Macaulay, much less chance of him being able to actually get the solo kill. Now a wonder. But they are bleeding damage. Jungle control on the side of IG, which is not the plan they went in with. We said two preferential lanes in mid and bot lane. But top lane evolving has put G2 in a worrying state. Well, they've already secured every objective in the game that's been taken so far. Why not keep that stat together? As Jackie grabbed the second turn. a shock place blast on a Garnet out of fog. He's basically out of the fight. He just has to go back. While mid lane is the calling coming out from Jackie Love to make sure Shelly gets off that second charge on the tier two turret here. As the Cyril uh -oh. pop with did going in, able to find the knockup onto two, but now going to be disengaged mostly. Balon having to back up as Yankos wants to go in, finding more damage onto Ning, who gets himself out with a nice EQ combo. Perks coming around from the side now as well. Jackie popping the Blade of the Moon King, keeping himself in a good spot. Perks going to be slowed, and G2 will not, which right now is not usually their decision to make. Uh, breathe while you can, because IG is not going to let you do it much longer. Yankos going to be in some trouble here as Balon goes forward, looking to find the knockup of the Glacial Fissure. That's going to be killed no, number one. Perks, Perks going to be in some trouble now, too. What did happen to get him? away, gets knocked up into that smite, and that is two going the way of Invictus Gaming. Jackie looking to make it three, but Wonder gets himself away. And Wonder, he's not going to be able to contest this wave, so in a turret goes down. This is all pre-20 minutes, guys. The Baron still hasn't spawned. A measurable amount of sustain coming in now for these guys, even if they take some damage from a skirmish with G2. They'll be able to get this off. turret. They're putting first in the top lane. They're saying, all right, let's take a trade, get some gold back here, and try to fight for what we can. And this is what I was talking about with G2 earlier. They are risk averse. They're trying to minimize these losses, not put the majority on his team. He's gone for the full tank build with the Knight's Vow and the Cinder Hulk. Also has a stopwatch in case he gets the one who jumped on. And now Jarn is going to be in some trouble. Gets himself dunked in the back line. Goes in, goes into the stasis right now. Jackie Love grabbed the first kill. As IG will push even further in, they do lose Nick. But they're still continuing to look to make those plays. Perks is in World Ender. Going to go into Resurrection. Wonder trying to find the damage on the Demonic Ascension, but he won't be able to get really anyone. Balon over the wall could be in some trouble. Instead, it's going to be a killing spree for Jackie Love. And IG win yet another fight. They're diving the inhibitor turrets at 24 minutes here. The minion wave already set up. It's another turret going the way of IG. All six have now been cracked. Regular season. Engage. There's more than enough follow-up here. Speaking of engage, he sets Jackie up for a race. Rampage and IG is now set up for a big game. push. It's tier three turret under siege. They'll knock that one down, no problem whatsoever. Inhibitor will fall next as four members of G2 now wonder how in the hell are we gonna hold this here at the Nexus turret? Jackie going forward, looking to find a couple shots there, getting that damage. Shy's on the front line. It's gonna be damage coming out on the first now here as well. Balon throws up the shield. Shy looking to find damage on the back line too. Perks in the front line won't be able to do much of anything. Goes into resurrection immediately. Turret falls, one left standing. As now Wonder's gonna be the target. Goes into stasis to buy a couple of extra seconds. Has to get himself away. Shy still looking to make something happen. It's two seconds of burn and freeze spawn. But G2's already losing everyone else. With this gonna be brought very low. They try to go back in and find the counter attack, but Yankos can't quite do it. It's a double kill over to Rookie. But Wonder gets the shutdown onto him. Ning, Balon, Jackie, they're all on the Nexus turret while Shy just dashes around and kites everyone else through the smoke. IG has managed to find themselves most of the fight, but they won't be able to grab the Nexus just yet. They retreat away. Oh, they Nexus. know this game will inevitably end. They can't find the end right now, but what about now? Oh, Ning doesn't need the end when he can find Wonder like that, and that's going to be Jackie set up to find himself another a double kill over to IG's AD carry. It's also the nice spot. How about a Baron buff to join it? No reason not to, right? It's on yep. the map. It's alive. You want it to be dead. Still be. 17 years of age. Coming to age on this big pressure match. They're able to roll through. We're just looking for a blank. We're just trying to make some sort of a final stand here as G2 have to find their fight. Perk's going to be taken very low. Ning already grabbed the kill down onto Jarnan in the back line. But Long grabs the kill onto Wadid here too. Wonder trying to stand and make some sort of a defense, but everyone else has already gone. A double kill over to Ning. And IG gets the clean ace. And they'll take the whole face. Game one goes with Victus Gaming. Dominated in game number one. So G2 
I feel so much of this is going to come down to Yankos, to his pathing. And on the Gragas, Very risky feeling. decision here from Yankos. He already full cleared top, and he bought Predator Boots. He's going straight top, so he essentially has to make this gank work. Otherwise, he's going to fall way behind. Hurts going in on the Rookie here, but Talia is there. The Seismic Shot makes it happen at first blood. Oh, he lives! Rookie lives through it. Ning making the choice to stay, and it pays off huge. This is so big, though. You can see Ning is working his way up, but he, he pulls it off. The Shy in some trouble. Predator Gragas coming around. The hammer to deny things. The Shy flattening himself backwards. Still gonna it's be kept alive for now. Ning's making his way in. It's gonna be Seismic Shove. It's damage coming down, but it's only gonna be a kill over to G2 for now. Yankos having to flash away, trying to keep himself alive. Chain's not gonna do it. Ning can't find the follow-up, and that's G2 making it one for one overall. While bottom side, 2v2 breaks out. Balon's taken very, very low. With Did looking to find a couple more auto attacks. Needs that stun with that tongue, and there you go. With Did takes him down. That was so important at the end that they get a 2v2 kill. Yes, IG, the teleport back in. Ning is still here. Seismic shove gonna throw Yankos back. The damage continues coming out from the threaded volley, and Ning picks up a second for an if, this game. If they can than Aatrox early, LeBlanc greater than Aurelia early. Gragas already has to be in the right spot, and the Shice has gone for an all-in. Wonder's taken very low. Remember, he doesn't have a world ender. He can't keep himself alive. Lands, they have had one hell of a journey to get here so far, so I do not expect them to go down without a point. Pop side to dive on the Wonder. World ender comes out, but immediately going to be popped. Resurrection only brings him back with about 200 HP, and Rookie says, I'll get rid of that second life as well. Yeah, there's no getting out of that one for Wonder in the 3v1, so... Easy kill, and it will be the first turret going the way of IG. And now it becomes a question about can they continue to snowball this? Can they knock now? What does IG have decided? Nope, you want the Infernal Drake? That's going to be ours too. And that's why the Shy just walked right down, right? They bring down the Shy to mid lane. He pushes these sorts of strategies really shine. See what they can do bottom here as Jackie loves to be collapsed on by three. Doesn't bother trying to spend any sort of a summoner spell to get out of that one. Knows he's dead. Defiant it's not dance. enough items on Aatrox or Aurelia for the Gragas gank to win 2v2. So play further around bot lane. Actually get a turret this game. However, it's at the cost of the Rift Herald, forcing them to react. All right, mid lane. It's Stasis from Yankos, keeping himself away from the seismic shove. Shelly's going to be pushing up on this tier 2 in the mid lane. Hertz goes in, trying to stop this from happening. Instead, he's going to be taken very low. Not quite killed, but he will find the kill with the Ignite on to Ning for the fade away as he walks off to the side. Also going to be a kill on the rookie there as Wonder makes himself known in this game. IG finally going to be forced off. That's a really big momentum because yeah. they get the bot lane target with the played me. items, but they get a kill. Speaking of kills, though. Meanwhile, top side is Wonder and Yankos on the run. Wonder trying to keep himself alive here. Doesn't have the World Ender available, and the Seismic Shove will seal his fate. That was looking like a Shy is flexing on the top side, just to buying. His ranking in the top 20 is one of our best now, this top champion players. has been his most played throughout the tournament, but it seems like the nerves are getting the better of him. Oh, Here God. In the semifinals, as the Shy will get the better of Wonder once again. World Ender going to be used, keeping Wonder alive. The Shy trying to disengage now, but instead, oh, there's oh, a fire oh, round! This man is a monster, and Perks will be beaten down! He actually kills him with the single player game, and everybody on G2 are the <laughs> monsters coming after him that he is just smashing down. Jackie Love nearly gonna be killed in mid lane instead. He's seen as a possible carry because you can do it like that if you are that damn good. And the shy oh, is as Wonder has no world ender and no way out. Man after man after man to the top side, controlling the jungle and Yankos. Oh, he's Yankos. playing. There's the cast. That's what he's been looking for all game. And the dividends are going to be huge for G2. They've already found themselves too. But now can they get away? Oh. The Shy's come in. The cavalry has arrived. The accelerated shock blast finds its way onto two, but they won't be able to grab any kills just yet. Rookie goes over the wall. Oh, my God. It's shot down, put it over onto a dead as the Shy grabs the kill and it perks here as well. IG has managed to grab themselves too. Bellon goes in for the save and keeps the number one team from China. That means we can beat the number two team from China. Oh. But it doesn't seem that easy. Rookie goes on a rampage, kills off Yankos instantly. This team is up 7,000 gold. They're up two Drakes. They're reality the G2 living. I mean, honestly, the Shy and Rookie are these apex predators where it feels like a nature documentary every time they come in the screen. 1v1, 1v2, just listen. You do and you hear the, the results. They're going for the all-in. G2 are making one last-ditch effort to make this game happen. Jackie Love off the side, going to be in some trouble. Taken down one versus four, but did also going to face the same fate. As IG respond, it's one for one. 
IG are all right with it though. They lost their AD carry. They took down the enemy support. They've still got both those big solo laners online. Accelerated Shock Blast gonna be sidestepped there. Yankos not the victim of that one. Push continuing here. The bottom side. Belon going in. There comes Seismic Shove. Yankos gonna be taken very low. Shy goes unstoppable as the tier three turret will fall in the bottom lane. This is no Baron, by the way. They're just breaking into the base of their own will and strength. They will smash down pushing. inhibitor number one. They're pushing further onto the Nexus. G2 doesn't even feel safe defending their Nexus turret. Yarden opens up the firing range, but the Shy just runs him down. Get out of your own base, he says. This chase is fearless, and IG continues. The Shy is three levels up on everyone on the enemy team. He's a monster, a raid boss right here, and no one's taking him down. He'll continue just constantly being forward. Hertz looks to make the dive. The Balon is right there to turn around. The Shy is dominating. The Ignite will not find the kill. Rookie's finally shut down there by Yankos. G2 continues to defend. They have one Nexus turret remaining and equal the Shy. Wonder has done the lowest damage in the game, lower than his own support. Yeah. And now the Baron That's will be it. taken. That's G2's final stand. It's a Baron up IG with a double kill onto their mid laner, pushing the B. Have we ever had a game that's 11,000 gold and it's still 1v9 for the Shy? The Shy could go 1v19 if the man wanted to right now. Somebody stop him. It won't be G2, though, because they have no possible way of fighting back. That's one auto attack. He's 17. One that's two hits. Man, two hits. Third hit gonna come in now as Jackie Love makes sure that Perks finds himself a black and white screen as he watches his Nexus fall. IG will take us to game point, but they're gonna pad the stats here a little bit first. The Shy tries to get away. He'll finally be shut down. IG decides that's enough fooling around. Let's go for the Nexus now. Burning it down. One, two, three. Couple more hits will do it. G2 looking to make that last stand, but the minions say no. And that's 2-0 in Victus Gaming. And no one will leave this game not knowing the name, the Shy. He has make a lot of sense, though, as an answer into the LeBlanc. You put the Aurelia top. You put that Camille in the jungle, uh, and you have, you know, more well-rounded. Seeing if they can find Lee Sin. Oh, maybe they can die. Oh, if Ning Pace checks this, he's going to be in some trouble over the wall. Come he failed his ward. The lockdown and the damage is there. It's first blood for G2. Ning was looking for a ward hop back over the wall, but he actually failed the ward placement, and now they can turn this into a dive on the Shy. This is huge for G2. Shy already had to use the flash. Yanko's going in, finding the dive, and Perks makes sure that he's part of the... Maybe there's a chance to look for something here in the near future, but it's Rookie going in on to Perks here. Here in the mid lane yet again trying to find that damage after shock already going to be rocked both junglers show up as the claw goes backwards perks tries to get himself away but yankos now going to be in some serious danger the distortion oh. in the auto attack rookie is a master at this champion as we're going to see wonder come in and clean up ning now finds a disarm down on the shy who's in the world ender but still going to be in some trouble taken down into the resurrection what did rotating over to the fight now as well trying to find something rookie with well, that pixie around bot but they're trying to snowball top side no ult on the shy they know no Shy doesn't have that free resurrection here. Wow, oh. that's a good flash coming out from him to stay alive, but is it going to be enough? Wonder trying to get himself away, using the flash to do so. Yanko's taken down! He will find the kill in return, but now Rookie is on the hunt, looking to find even more damage down now on to Perks, getting himself back and forth with the distortions as G2 retreats. It'll be one for one on this trade overall. Rookie's still going to be going forward, pops the cleanse, gets back over the wall, and he bites off more than he can chew, and Wonder's got that punish. Yeah, punishing him. Big... Perks, but a good use of the aftershock will make sure that doesn't hit too much harder. G2, for the first time this series, grabbed themselves first turret there in the bottom lane to make sure they're ahead of the Shelly push here in mid. Perks could be taken down to about half. Rookie can say the same. Yanko's trying to buy some time, but now it's Wadid coming in from behind. Ning grabs the kill down onto Perks. It's going to be one for zero for IG so far. Wadid's still going to be tanking up, but now the Vanguard's edge has been deployed. Wonder's coming in for the counterattack, and he cleans up Rookie at the Hextech Ultimatum. Steals Jackie Love's fate, and G2 wins another fight. Huge fight for the, the champion select they drop. Mid lane, G2 want to go in yet again. Yankos has to flash to get himself away, but Ning's able to find the follow up with a nice kick back, and that shutdown credit over to Jackie Love. G2 not quite finding themselves the turret just yet. Jarn is barely going to get himself away from the Glacial Fissure. The claw from Perks to take the escape, and what did will be the sacrifice as G2 lose to. Costly mistake there from G2. They so badly wanted that outer tower. Instead, they lose their cooldowns, they lose two kills, and they will lose their own mid lane turret here. 
No moment that they saw specifically Ning walk up and land a Q on the Yangos there to get out, but they got greedy trying to also get the turret, spare the blushes. They have to against this team. 500 gold separates the two squads now. Wonder goes in, finds the stun down to Jackie Love, who gets himself away for now. Wonder still diving very deep, but he's gonna be alone and shot down by Jackie. Fight still coming through, it's gonna be one for one so far. Jackie's still trying to get himself away, gonna be chased down the by Burke. Yankles burst it down, and the kill credit goes over to Yarn, and Yankles nearly felled, barely walks away, and G2 will keep their jungler alive, finding the two for one. But here comes the shy with the slam into the ground. Where will the fight go from here? As with Din to turn it back around. Over on the yard and goes the Shy. With Din's gonna be buying some time, but Rookie will take him out. The Shy continues going forward with a second slam to find himself another kill. Invictus Gaming has tied this game up in kill. Dotting their eyes, crossing the T's, trying to get the second Inferno. It's just gone. They're gonna be taken low, secured by Ning as Yankos goes into the pink, gonna start the fight, but he's one versus two. Perks coming in now as well. Ning taken very low, likely gonna be killed to start this fight off. With Din able to find some CC on the multiple people. Valon now gonna be the target of the Vanguard's Edge. Wonder trying to make something happen, but G2 looks like they just want to disengage this one now. They already got the pick on the enemy jungler. Oh! So many people! That's the Aatrox damage! And the Shy makes it happen! The Shy finds everyone there. Rookie's still hunting. Oh, Rookie makes it a double kill for himself. He cleans up perks and tragedy strikes for the EU LCS representatives. Rookie will continue, but out of mana means he's out of time to continue the Too chase. Yep. Blue Trinket is going to be played Four. down. Yankos wants to go over the wall. This is your hero moment, but it's going to be secured by Ning, and now Yankos finds himself dead. If IG had see won wonder. the game before, they're in a great spot oh. to come back and find huge games right now. Wonders behind enemy lines running straight towards a turret. He wants to get away, but how long will he even be able to hold on? Ning goes in to find plenty of damage. Wonder tries to turn it back around, but he's already underneath the turret, and it's Baron plus Wheels two. have completely fallen off. They don't know how to respond. Just as G2 are about to start a scenario. And IG, when this team gets Barons, the map explodes. They force things down. They team fight. They run at you. Gives him the, the advantage. He had the vision as well, and it was always going to be a worse than 50-50 chance for Yanko. I think people are too. Oh, boy. After the early game, that is a a hell of a statement to make as he goes into World Ender, which is the green light for IG to go into the base. G2 support gonna be taken very low, forced to pop the ultimate. IG will break inhibitor number one effortlessly. Inhibitor turret number two now under siege. That one will not be contested either as inhibitor number two will follow suit. Knowing IG, they may just keep pushing, but they are gonna take the calm, measured approach here. They look like they wanna back off. Yanko stepping forward, seeing if maybe there's a pick to find. Yarnin goes in for the ultimate. Over the wall they go, seeing if maybe they can find something. Legit is going to be way too far forward. It's killing spree for Ning. And G2's mid laner is now going to be in some trouble. Bellon taken low and the taken kid. down. They're managing to find the entirety of the fight. The Shy goes on killing spree. Yanko's going to go down. Perks is alone, but it will not matter. G2 is out of there. And IG will head right back into the base. G2 accelerate their own demise. Perks is wasting Jackie Love's time. The death time is though amazing. They may be long enough, the game could still end. Yeah. All Jackie has to do is keep Perks away. Rookie and the Shy continue the push. It's what did in five seconds. The so minion apparently starts with a three level lead. It's open nexus. IG is saying this game, this series ends right here. Perks getting himself back. What did's on the front line. Void Seeker fired off. G2 uh -oh. in the trouble in there. There you go. What did's gonna be the first to drop. Shy goes on a rampage. Everyone else is stuck in the fountain. And IG will cleave through them all. The stun comes down. Yankos goes out. Killing spree over to Rookie. IG clean house. And in a clean sweep, they punch their ticket to the finals. No questions left unanswered from IG. An extreme show of dominance here from the LPL representatives. The Shy and Rookie are, simply put, incredible. And in a tournament desperate for a favorite, maybe we were front row seat, ladies and gentlemen, to the first favorite being crowned, or the most recent one at least, because at this point, IG have rampaged through G2, and it's hard to see Fnatic or C9 being just as emphatic tomorrow as we saw from IG today. And remember the road to get here. Both of these teams 
took down tournament favorites to even earn their spots today. And both of those series went the full distance. For IG to then beat their opponent now 3-0 is a hell of a statement. And they look ferocious going into that ultimate match. They really do. The shot, no matter what happened, it felt like the Shy was going to win, that he was going to take control in the game. And you have to take a moment, though, and appreciate the run and the showing that G2 has put up at this world. Taking down RNG, making it through the play and making it through groups, and really a tournament to be proud of. Their contribution to the tournament cannot be denied. They were the ones to eliminate RNG, the team on a golden road, scheduled to win every time of the year. That didn't happen. What I take away from this series, though, is my original question of how do IG match up to what we expected from G2? They took it on front to back and said, we'll take you on those carry matchups, and they decimated them in the carry matchups. And that's a big, big worry now, because now you know they can deal with that. They can yep. play their own style as well. How do, they even, how do you even prepare for this team coming into a world final? And we talked about how it was curious that they chose the blue side coming into this series after playing all of their games on Both red sides in the quarterfinals. Both sides pretty good. Yeah, all of a sudden, it's almost like IG knows how to play League of Legends <laughs> straight up. This is just a really strong team. And for more on their dominating victory, let's send it over for World's Cooldown. Thank you, Captain Flowers, and welcome to World's Cooldown. IG was two hits on a Nexus away from a 3-0. Almost got reverse sweep. This time around, they say, not going to happen. They get the 3-0 over G2. Definitely cement themselves as a worthy finals team. And that's exactly why we both predicted IG 3-0. Yep. Excellent work, Deficio. Killed a pregame <laughs> bot, by the way. Don't right. let anyone go uh, There's a problem the... uploading it to YouTube. Yeah, so weird there. that this pre-show of all pre-shows. But let's talk about this <laughs> uh, final game because this was the toughest victory for IG in this uh, three-game series here. G2 right. actually had control over the game for a substantial period of time. They made some decent adjustments in draft. It just wasn't quite enough. It was also some wonky drafting from IG. They looked like they had a clear shot that, like, Braum Lucian, like, nah, give me the Kaisa. Looked like they could have gone for a comfort pick for Ning again, and like, nah, give me the Lee Sin. I'm, like, white-fisting the, the <laughs> desk, like, oh, oh, no, we're going to game four. I mean, it looked like it for a moment, at least. But that's what happens in a best of five when you've secured two wins already as IG based on simply having, you know, like, the best solo lane setup possible for yep. your team to win with the Shy and, and Rookie as well. So when you go into game three, even if this, even if this had snowballed out of control, like, you could have readjusted for the next game. So Absolutely. It felt like they were in control except for the 20 minutes here. And obviously, they started with Ning. Uh, not really sure what he tried to do on this end. And uh, props to G2. I think this is kind of the G2 that we wanted to see enter this best of five. And it right. took, uh, unfortunately, too long for them to finally show up in game three. If they had played the first two games like this, I would have been uh, great with the series. Yeah, so congratulations to G2 because no one expected them to be here. But I think they could have had a lot more fight uh, than what we got out of this 3-0. Still, though, I, I have to say, um, I thought the soul lane matchups would be a little bit more even going into the series. Right. Uh, a bit like we saw in the last game. But watching game one, the Jace from Rookie, and then game two, the, the Jace from the Shy, it's where you get that reality check of just how good these two players can be when they get to play, you know, a comfortable champion, a good matchup, and they get that early lead. Because we see so many other players when they get one or two kills, Sure, they might get one turd, but then they kind of slow down a bit. The Shy was like 1v2-ing people in their own base. Like, that's the kind of stuff you want to see when a world-class player gets ahead. And unfortunately for G2, there was never going to be a scenario where they were able to beat Invictus Gaming in the same way that they did RNG. You know, Let Me and Xiaohu are completely different uh, animals comparatively to Rookie and the Shy. They're just not on the same level right now. And I think that was unfortunately like the big wake-up call for G2, where stylistically, they really hadn't been tested in that one through one or in those mm -hmm. solo lanes. And it was going to be matchup dependent and, you know, maybe fumbled a couple matchups here and there with a couple of the drafts and then really had that wake-up call of, okay, you know, this isn't let me. This is a completely different top lane. Yeah, because um, when we did the win conditions going into the series, one of the big ones was Jankos and Wadid kind of outperforming Ning and Baolan. So the supporting crew around these carries needed to win on the side of G2 for them to actually take down IG. And during the games, it, it became very clear that that was not going to happen. I think we did had like a good time Kench game for sure, but uh, we didn't get to see three games in a row of Jankos just like beating on Ning. And that's obviously also too much to ask from him to do this, but mm -hmm. it was one of the needed things 
for G2 to then stop the snowball from the two solo laners. When that didn't happen and Ning with the Javan was good in the first game and second game he did fine as well, it suddenly went super IG favorite. Yeah, the pieces weren't there for G2 today. We did get a look at G2's favorable early game there in this third game. I do want to take a look a at start. one other moment. Exactly. Great start for G2, but where it kind of began to turn. In the mid game here, G2 perhaps a little too aggressive and it gets turned around. I mean, they have to take these fights at this point. You're looking for those power spikes. It felt good for G2. It just kind of came down to execution, maybe some mismanaged uh, target identification and kind of the call afterwards. You know, you have a very clear win here that you just need to keep track of the LeBlanc and then choose, do we continue to push this out or do we take, you know, some of these kills and maybe reset the map and G2 decided to push the luck? Yeah, because after this, uh, when G2 stay, they obviously get flanked. Yankers poor guy tries to get away and Aatrox flies in. Hey guys, he's behind us. <laughs> this was fight number one Shy got to join. Yeah. Uh, that was then fight number two as well around the dragon where he made like the biggest 1v5 kind of play. We were all screaming, just back, just back, yeah. what are you doing? But and then they four-man run into exactly. the third queue. <laughs> They're like, oh, we should just kill this guy. He's all alone. And then they end up then jumping into that massive queue, right? The whole fight is set up by G. And, and again, that's where you see the differences in this game than between some of the individual players and how hard you can carry. And he's doing that from behind in this game. He wasn't yes, he set was up too. like he was in the first two games. Through today's series, Invictus Gaming performed, but there were a couple of notable performances in that 3-0 that earned players the honor of MasterCard player of the game. For Invictus Gaming, it was rookie, and then the Shy twice. Surprise, surprise, it's the solo laners for Invictus Gaming. I'm really happy that the Shy finally got his big moment on the stage. I think Papa Smithy said it best on cast. He finally now proved to the international audience just what a big star he is and cemented that on the, uh, the World's Hall of Fame, if you will, as he walks towards finals. They got one more best of five to go, but those are the kinds of performances you want to see out of your solo laners before you move on to that final mm -hmm. stage. To hear more from the victorious pros who played on stage, let's send it over to Shock for an interview with the Invictus Gaming top laner. Thank you very much, guys. I'm here with the Shy after three zeroing their way to the final. The Shy in your very first World Championship. What does it mean to you to make it to the final? 네 결승전에 진출했습니다. 상대형 승리였는데 첫 월드컵에서 결승전까지 가기는 소감이 어떤가요? 네 상대형으로 좀 약간 쉬운 쉽게 이기게 됐는데 저희 팀이 정말 잘해 주었고 네 그래서 지금 체감은 안 되지만 되게 네 기분 좋은 것 같아요. So it was an easy 3-0 victory, but this is so surreal for me. All the other players were doing so perfectly for this victory, so I'm really happy. A relatively easy victory. I have to say, you definitely carried a lot of those games. What allowed you to step up so heavily for your team today? So I think it is all about our draft. We used to pl play around the bot lane, but this time we came with the draft with playing around the top lane. Our coaching staff kind of planned it. I think it went as we planned before. Well, draft is, of course, important, but I think you're maybe underplaying how strong you were today. Is there anyone left in the tournament in the top lane that could beat you? Nope. No? No? No. Well, way. we'll see. It looks like you guys have a fantastic road laid out for you. Are you starting to dream of lifting that Summoner's Cup with IG for the LPL? Or is it dangerous to start dreaming so early? So I sometimes dream about those happy imaginations, but you know, final is the most important thing for us. So we have to kind of chill down and prepare for the finals. Okay, calming down, but no one else is going to beat him who's left in this tournament. Thank you very much. The Shy and IG make it to the final. No top laner better than him in the tournament, or so he seems to think. I mean, doing what he did to Wonder in this series, a lot of people are pointing to Wonder as maybe the guy who could match him, who could, uh, you know, unseat him 
Uh, it's not going to happen. He's going to look towards either Bupo, Soaz, or Licorice uh, in that final series. The Shy's only had the better of him a couple of times in the LPL. JDG's uh, top laner, Zoom, comes to mind. Though. So it's, you know, getting a solo kill on the Shy in his domestic league is an accolade uh, that someone would equate to if they manage to solo kill Faker or something right, like now that. Just imagine getting a win over him in the finals. <laughs> now, uh, uh, to wrap up this series, though, I do want to talk about G2 as they exit today. Uh, top four finish here at Worlds. We've been talking about it all tournament long. Mm -hmm. the, this team, from start to finish of 2018, uh, their you know trials and tribulations, and ultimately prevailing, you know, uh, to, to come as the third yeah. seed over those obstacles, and then to crush the doubters along the way through the play-ins, through the groups, and then here to the semifinals. I just think it's crazy that two months ago, I think these five players were looking at each other after losing to Misfits in playoffs and being like, what's next? Like, That's it, yeah. This is a mess, nothing is working, you know, we didn't win in spring, we're not winning in summer, and we play for G2 Esports. The organizations that will always make the final, always challenge for the title they in Europe. They had their Madrid jerseys ready to go. They had a, the Madrid jerseys were ready and they didn't make the finals in Madrid. Uh, but now two months later, they're, they look at this top four finish, beating RNG. It wasn't an easy road to top four by any means. Right. They had to go all the five games. Obviously, they were completely outmatched in this series, but that doesn't take away from them shutting down RNG and getting out of the group A as well. Without a doubt. With their victory, though, Invictus Gaming become the first LPL team to make a world championship final since 2014. And they'll face the winner of Cloud9 versus Fnatic playing tomorrow. IG as finalists. Let's talk about this squad because, again, the 3-2 victory over KT, that was nearly a 3-0. They follow it with a dominant 3-0 over G2. And now they're staring across the bracket at Fnatic and Cloud.